what does this 47% mean? Gene expression data are showing that 47% of the variation in this transcriptome data was due to treatment 1 and treatment 2. Welcome to another video tutorial. In this video, I will tell you how we can interpret the results of principal component analysis in RNA-seq data. Before we go further into the detail of principal component analysis, let's first try to understand that what actually PCA can. In this example, let's try to understand the gene expression data which has been plotted in the form of these samples. You can see here there are actually two treatments and each treatment is mentioned with a different color. Here is one green color and one is blue color. So each treatment has three biological repeats so there are totally six samples. You can see here all of these six samples have been randomly placed in this space. So what does the PCA will do? PCA will actually rearrange all these samples and will place the similar or the correlated samples into one group. And you can see in this group, the samples are more correlated and in this group, samples are more similar. Now let's try to understand that how PCA can help us to understand the correlation between the treatments. So let's take another example. Here is another treatment and this treatment has three samples. You can see here all the sample of this treatment has almost the same X value and same Y value. Here is another treatment. You can see here it has also the high X value and it has also the Y value. So if we try to plot a trend between these two treatments, you can see here it is showing a positive correlation. So what does this mean? So it means that treatment 1 and treatment 2 has a positive correlation. So if you have also a similar figure in which the treatment samples are placed in this trend, so it means those samples have a positive correlation. So now let's try to understand another example. You can see here in this example the treatment 1 is placed with high Y value but low X value. And similarly you can see in the treatment 2 samples you can see it has high X value but low Y value. So let's now try to plot the trend between these two. You can see the trend is decreasing. So it means the treatment 1 and treatment 2 has an inverse correlation. Now let's try to understand that what is PC1 and PC2 variance. You can see here on the X axis here is PC1 that is 26% and here is PC2 that is showing 21%. So it is important to note that PC1 is always higher compared to the PC2. So you can see here, here the PC1 is 26% and PC2 is 21%. If we try to sum up this PC1 and PC2, it is almost 47%. What does this 47% mean? It means this gene expression data are showing that 47% of the variation in this transcriptome data was due to treatment 1 and treatment 2. But let's suppose we have a condition where there are more treatments and uh, more PC then what would be the solution? So it means there would be more than two principal component analysis. Let's try to understand through this example. You can see here in this example there are 14 samples and 10 principal component analysis and here is the value of principal component analysis. You can see here principal component 1, principal component 2 and principal component 3. All of these principal component have been placed in the 3D space. It is important to note that always PC1 is higher compared to the PC2 and the PC2 is higher compared to the PC3. So it means that as the number of treatments goes higher the number of principal component will also be more. Now let's try to understand another example to understand 
principal component analysis showing the variance in gene expression data in different treatments. The PC1 is 56%, PC2 is 31%. So the cumulative of PC1 and PC2 is 86%. So how about that remaining 14%? So let's suppose if there is another treatment which is called treatment 3 and PC3 in this example is 12%. So what would be the cumulative of this? You can see PC1, PC2 and PC3 is making up to 98% of the variation in this transcriptomic data. Now let's try to understand that what we can interpret from PC1 and PC2. So PC1 reveals the most variation while PC2 reveals the second most variation. So if a transcriptome has a high PC1 and PC2, it means the quality of transcriptome is good because most of the variation in gene expression under study is due to only this treatment. But if any transcriptomic data has low PC1 and low PC2, it means that some variation are still not covered in these treatments and there is a need to incorporate more treatments. Principal component analysis can be represented through this score plot. You can see here in this score plot, there are two components, principal component one and principal component two. PC analysis can also be represented through this scree plot. You can see here, usually a scree plot has 10 principal component and PC1 is higher compared to the PC2 and PC2 is higher compared to the PC3 and so on. PC analysis can also be represented through this loading plot. You can see here, here all the sample have been placed randomly in their space. So what we have understood so far that what is PCA in RNA-seq? So actually PCA uses the linear combination of the gene expression values to define a new set of unrelated variables. So what are the benefits of PCA in RNA-seq? PCA can help us to reduce the dimension of data set. PCA can also help us to show the similarities between data sets which are correlated to the distances in the projection of the space defined by the principal component. PCA can also help us to identify the outlier with respect to the principal component. Hopefully now you have understood that why we use PCA and what are the benefits of PCA in RNSA. However, if you have still any question related to the PCA in RNSA data, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.